Hello my friends, this is Alex. Welcome to Socialism Survival Podcast number 39. While working on absolutely different subject, other than what you will hear today, I felt compelled by the chain of events and accompanying thoughts to go back to my father's garden and speak from there. Am I sitting now in some mysterious garden while speaking to you? No, not yet. But I will take you back to my father's garden after following segment of virtual housekeeping and community organizing. For quick updates, follow me on socialismsurvival.com website. Please subscribe there to email notifications of the future shows. Please contact me if you have any questions or comments. And please do not forget to introduce others to this podcast. To my father's garden subject driving early in the morning on father's day i was listening to self-sufficient homestead show and was greatly surprised when johnny max announced me as one of the winners in a special drawing contest among those who linked to heirloom seed swap Dot com website. What a great Father's Day gift. But at the same time, I was saddened by the DDoS attack on self-sufficient homestead that started after I was interviewed by Johnny Max and the Queen. The attack resulted in their web hosting shut down twice. Knowing how much they do in order to bring interesting and useful content to their listeners, I thought I would dedicate this show to people like them. I dedicate it to real fathers. I dedicate it also to my ancestors who were great gardeners. This show will be very short, as I had to switch quickly to another subject, but I hope you will enjoy it. I dedicate this show also to our Heavenly Father, who created the first and the most beautiful garden. Let's read about it from the Bible. Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 9 and 15. Now the Lord God has planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. You see, Father God creates first man and first garden. And after his God's job as creator, he immediately creates first job in the human history. 
What is it? A gardener. Did you ever see that misleading drawings of Adam and Eve walking in the garden of Eden? Not working in the garden of Eden. Walking. Did you ever think artists were lying to you? Did you think of paradise as a great vacation Adam and Eve had in that garden? I know some even think it is the perfect picture of communism drawn by misinformed artists. Unfortunately, let's say God is government and Adam and Eve are people. After what you've heard from the Bible, do you think people were placed there to wait for government to feed them from golden spoon as babies? Or God provided them with a job? Do you hear me? That's how I take you back to my father's garden. As Adam's descendants, we all were created gardeners. It doesn't matter even if you sit all day long in eight by eight foot office cube, you are gardener too. You just don't know that yet. Well, now you know, as I just told you that our father hooked us, his children, to a beautiful garden to work in it and to take care of it. What are your children hooked to? What did you hook to your children? What they are doing when you leave early in the morning to your job and come back home late? What? PlayStation? Or maybe even worse, secretly browsing porn sites when finally your kids go out with you on Saturday or Sunday? Do they eat the fruit of their hard work? Or you feed them with Big Mac and fries? Do your kids hear from you the plan for action and work assignment or only complaints that government didn't do for you this and government didn't do for them that? Oh, sorry, you are Christian and you're upset that I am teaching you from Jewish Bible or as you like to call it, Old Testament. Okay, well, let's look together in New Testament, new, brand new Testament. You won't find there neither socialism or communism and I detest so-called Christian socialism as a false religion. Here is Apostle Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 4.12 We work hard with our own hands. And Ephesians 4.28 He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Come on, fathers, teach your children to work with their own hands before it's too late. And those beautiful hands are handcuffed for stealing. Living in this wonderful land, I see more and more that real fathers are becoming rare species. 
what fathers are doing today. Most of them either up to their ears in sexual sins, alcohol and drugs, wasting cash they could leave for their children, or they are working hard piling up cash to leave a decent inheritance that according to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 17 to 19 might be wasted by a foolish son who didn't learn wisdom from his dad but like today's fatherless young generation that graduated from public school of socialism expects his great daddy president to take care of all his needs, to pay all his bills, wasting even inheritance of the future generations. Let me take you now back to my father's garden in Soviet Ukraine of 1970s, 1980s. My grandpa was great gardener. He worked as a gardener at Soviet collective farm garden or kolkhoz garden. My dad didn't stay in kolkhoz. After graduation from technical college, he moved to the city. He got married in the city after he came home from gulag camps. He was working at locomotive depot of Soviet Railroad until heavy will fell on him, making him unable to do heavy work for the most part of his life. But thanks to God, a gardener was alive and well within him. After having six children, he and mom finally found a piece of land on the outskirts of our big city, where with the help of underground believers community, they could build our house. And whatever soil was left in front, behind, and by the sides of the house, our dad used all of it to plant various fruit trees, berry producing bushes, and a variety of vegetables. Our house was literally surrounded by the garden. I will try to find some pictures and put with my blog transcript of this show. By watching and helping, we learned from our dad how to take care of different plants. In the summer, when it was too hot in the house because air conditioners didn't exist at the time, we would sit there with our parents under the shadow of our fruit trees. And dad would read to us his Bible, praying with us and teaching us how to live decent life, working hard and trusting God, not big government. Now, when I see my siblings living their lives here in America. Most of them harvesting checks from their employers. I feel compelled by the gardener inside me to work hard in order to pass on to my kids what I've learned from my father and my grandfather. Whatever we are teaching our children in natural life, we can project it onto spiritual life too. No one becomes a saint in one day. No one expects fruits today from something that was planted yesterday. All it takes is a small tiny seed of truth from God. God's word placed in fertile children's soul or a seed from heirloomseedswap.com.
placed in a fertile soil to make a difference that will flourish from generation to generation. It took whole heart of God, full of love, to make a beautiful garden for first family he created. And by following in his footsteps, you will be able to pass to your children and your grandchildren not only beautiful garden of your creativity and wisdom, but the most important you have, your love. Thank you for listening to Socialism Survival Podcast. Until the next week, this is the voice of common sense, your socialism survival host, Alex.